of that number of that trust. So again, is if you're using trustee recipient, uh, now why do I say trustee recipient and not just recipient? Well, is going back to how you want to actually use their system of enforcement against them, you see that in UCC, Uniform Commercial Code, uh, under Article 3, there's a section of endorsements uh, of qualified versus unqualified endorsements. So brush up on those and you'll see that uh, what often happens is when you usually just sign uh, a document, you're gifting it. And when you put a name on it, <clears throat> such as Thomas, uh, then what you're doing is you're actually gifting it to the registry that was created in that name of the crown. Okay, very good. Thank you, Brian. That, that's a good explanation. Um, let's go into a little bit about what the deed pull actually does. We have the, like with, for the new, new callers, um, uh, let's see. Do you, do you have that pulled up where you could just read out that first uh, paragraph maybe and explain just real quick because I've got some other folks with questions. Yeah, hold on. I'll just get to 133 here. Okay. All right, an ecclesiastical deed poll. And this is, uh, this is from 1-7.org, and it's in the Canons of Positive Law under Article 133 in Ecclesiastical Deed Poll. Okay, Canon 1553, an ecclesiastical deed poll is a valid form of deed poll and therefore deed and contract whereby a true person first expresses, affirms, and conveys certain rights to another party who are then lawfully bound upon proof of receipt. An ecclesiastical deed poll is primarily different from a standard deed poll in that a true person evokes their divine rights conveyed on robin egg blue paper and sealed in blood to a Roman person who has sought to upsurp or abrogate these rights. Canon 1555, an ecclesiastical deed poll is permitted to be issued when an inferior Roman person rejects the rule of law and seeks to assert an unattainable and illogical position of superior rights over divine law. Only a true person may issue an ecclesiastical deed poll. Okay, the reason why a true person can issue it is a corporation cannot issue an ecclesiastical deed poll. It's a dead corpus. By definition, an inferior Roman person has no authority to issue an ecclesiastical deed poll. An ecclesiastical deed poll must always be on standard size robin egg blue paper printed in serif font in recognition and respect of its status as a divine notice with the full authority of one heaven. In particular, the sacred rota, the 12 apostolic protho notaries, as well as the, the apostolic protho rabban of the divine Sanhedrin. A valid ecclesiastical deed poll must always be sealed in the blood of the trustee of the true trust, issuing it by using their thumbprint with the blood signature covered by clear plastic tape or direct exposure for the fundamental reasons. The blood of the trustee of the true trust and the content of the ecclesiastical deed poll prove the fraud and error of the continued existence of any cest KV in assuming the body is dead and the infusing of the blood of the trustee onto the paper breathes life into the paper, creating an instrument superior in standing than an even inferior Roman papal bull. Therefore, if the document is dishonored, then all documents ever issued by any society under Roman law must also by definition be null and void. And three, the use of blood in this manner perfects an unbreakable seal of an unbreakable deed and contract Therefore, any inferior Roman court that upsurps it openly admits that contract law under inferior Roman law no longer exists. When an ecclesiastical deed poll is issued, 
it's issued under the supreme court of one heaven with full authority of the divine creator and all inferior courts including the sacred rota hence the term per curium divina is always included to make clear to the inferior roman person the absolute authority of the instrument when a true person issues an ecclesiastical deed poll it is ultimately a divine notice of protest and dishonor from the divine creator Therefore, the dishonor of an ecclesiastical deed poll is the most grievous injury of the law and blasphemy to all believed to be divine. When an ecclesiastical deed poll is dishonored by a representative of Roman law, Sharia law, or Talmudic law, it is public notice by all officials of those religions and systems that they do not believe in the divine and that their law, by definition, is null and void. I think that covers it pretty good. And that was Article yeah. um, 133. Yeah, uh, that's right. That's Article on 133. One, uh, mm-hmm, on yeah. 1-7.org. And folks, uh, if you can go to that website and read that whole Article 133, that uh, does explain it. And uh, you can go on further through positive law and get some more information. A uh, quick question um, before I get to a better way and their question. Uh, would you go ahead and talk about the return location to put on the envelope uh, when that is mailed out, when the uh, deed poll is mailed? Sure, absolutely. Okay, so um, uh, through, the, uh, through the rabbit hole sea of procedure was there are a couple of things that really do hold true. One of them is the uh, is the ancient right and maxim use of four corners. Now, generally speaking, is when you have something that's in a box, it cannot at law be seen or heard. Uh, so, generally speaking, is if you take, for an example, um, let's say you've got the envelope, and and uh, so on the front of the envelope. And, and I'll just explain how I did mine, how I came up with this. Was uh, So on the front of the envelope, now, regardless of the position, because we all know that in, in, uh, in systems of, of banking and certainly double entry and accrual accounting, as everything is always done, usually is uh, you're always on the right side. The debtor is on the left, right? But... In this instance, we want recognition that the trustee is sending a document. So it doesn't matter that if you write on the left side, on the envelope. So what we do is on the top left-hand side of the face of the envelope, you would write trustee recipient and then your trust number. Underneath that, you would write care of. Now, do not put in care of because that means that basically is the trustee is in that jurisdiction. Just put care of, then write the address. Now, when it comes to the, the town, province, or state, and country, is what you would write is put those that information down but then put that in a box uh you may or may not use a postal code uh for myself i mean it uh, it's just i'm i'm an old salt die hard uh habits so i uh, the way i would uh, do it would i would uh, i would put uh trusty recipient uh, 9831673104031050 uh, but don't you put that number <laughs> yeah, you get your own trustee number and then I put care of and then I put the address uh, and then in the box I would put Toronto Ontario Canada non-domestic right in the middle of the envelope you put two executors and administrators of and whatever uh, entity that has that, that has summoned you uh, care of and then put their address no box then on the 
back of the envelope. Now you don't have to do that, but I, but something in my instinct told me that in the right upper right hand corner, just write trust number and then your trust number. So that on the back, and this solves some of these private uh, kind of issues that that's floating around out there about UP, UPU. Is you've now got the uh, the back right hand top corner uh, registered up with a trust name. Uh, now, as you know, is uh, endorsements front and back. Now you've you've got that back uh, side on the right side. Uh, you've got recognition through the left side on the public, and there you go. That's uh, that's the mailing. Now, what you do is you you uh, put that. Make sure the register mail number is on the envelope. Again, is not on the deed pole. The deed pole must always be fastened to the reverse of a Roman document, and uh, that goes inside. And then make sure you take uh, and make proof of mailing. Now, proof of mailing is something that uh, you can get down to a procedure of doing. Uh, what I would do, and I, I've done this many times, is I would. Uh, I would go, and usually most uh, post offices have photocopiers in them. Is you get the it, it would be uh, you get the postal clerk uh, to put the necessary uh, registry stickers on it, and then ask for them to photocopy it. Or, or get them to escort you to the photocopier. The reason I say that is so that you're using the post office as witness to the mailing. And what you can do from there is proceed to make a photocopy of the stamped accepted at mailing. So you now have a proof of mailing with the certification stamps on it. Now, uh, I mentioned something that's the four corner rule that you see the system uses that exclusively to extort and, and, and terrorize people. So one of the sneaky deaky things about endorsement is you'll see sometimes that the mailings and the back of, of stamps and, and, and other types of things, uh, endorsements have boxes where they put the, uh, the, the stamp in. Make sure you get the post office clerk to stamp on, uh, just so that it's outside of that box that they stamp, right? Uh, so that the stamp, the endorsement, can now be seen and heard at law. So that's just a little kind of a quick primer into mailing uh, procedures that you can do uh, in order to uh, m maintain uh, proper proof of service. Great. That's great. Thank you, Brian, for going through that for everyone. I just unmuted our um, a better way. And uh, do you have a question? Um. Hi. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Um. Could you please go over um. Um. What a um, person would do with a um a classic depot depot to get someone released from a prison. Um. Now, it, it, would this be a family member? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Well, I, um, this is going to sound a little bizarre, but you see, we're, we're, we're actually we're dealing with the salvage of a moving title. And it just so happens that the, the, the relative or love, uh, loved one that uh, is just kind of along for the ride, kind of like uh, how... Someone seizes a jacket, and someone's inside the jacket, right? So the issue is is uh, is serving on uh, the the right position in order to uh, get released. Now, again, is there should be some form of uh, ecclesiastical side within the courts. Uh, so what I would uh, I would suggest you do is. Have a look in to see if uh, there's a a, uh, a chapel somehow associated uh, that could be uh, put in to the side of the court uh, so that it's not in public court. 
that this mistake of fact has has been done. And one of these issues that you can come at in and the